when we started working on this project and kind of we had this like simple two-party equation of like, okay, we have a digital currency and we can launch it simply because there's Ethereum and so that should be easy. But now let's figure out this proof of personal problem. And we went a year just with that problem. <clears throat> and back then the, the, the founding team and the engineering team was very small. It was like four or five people. Most of them were physicists because most of them were my friends. And um, so we, 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 we did a lot of research. And um, with Improve of Personal, there's like three different areas you could think of. For one, you could just rely on governments. You could say, use KYC. Um, and that turned out to be a dead end really fast because it's, it's not global. We think many of the government systems will also break um, mm. relatively soon. And it's also a little bit kind of against the whole point of crypto. So you want to build infrastructure that is... Uh, can be relied on even if single parties fail. That, that's, the whole, that's the whole point of it. So we turned it away relatively fast. The second big category that you could think of is what is called web of trust. So you, like I know you and in, in, I know Camilla in real life, you know me. And so we can attest to each other that we're actually real humans. And so we give each other a score of one. And then you have a couple of friends and I have a couple of friends. And then we start spinning up a, a graph and um, everyone has like some value attached to them of how likely it is that they're actually real. And um, social networks tried to do this since, uh, since a long, long time. So Facebook, for example, had back then a, a pretty large team in that space. And <clears throat> so we built prototypes in that direction and just learned that even back then, these things would always fall to bots because you can just attack them in some ways. And we didn't think that actually blockchains would would make that would change that equation in any meaningful way because Facebook has so much data about everyone. If they cannot figure it out, it will be really hard for uh, kind of a decentralized network to do that. Mm -hmm. Then we went into biometrics and um, we really didn't want to do that um, because it, it, it sounded crazy. It, like the, this whole idea of like, okay, we need to manufacture a hardware device and it around the world for four people. Um, I mean, one of them being Sam Altman, but still for, for people and like no money shipping like a huddle device around the world sounded like a crazy idea. So, but there was just no other way. And we, we thought about it from every angle and um, we thought it's a very important problem to solve. So we went down this path and just to give you kind of the, the quick TLDR, which I think is important to take away is um, your, your iPhone um, or even, for example, the Vision Pro, because it now ha also has um, iris ID or optic ID, I think they call it. So it also scans the iris. Um, it does a, that does a one-to-one -one comparison. So it, it essentially just ensures that I'm, again, Alex signing in, right? So there's an embedding stored on the device. This is Alex and I log in again and uh, get compared to this previous embedding. If it works, I can use my phone. But if we want to solve this proof of personal problem collectively as a society, we need to compare Alex against everyone else. So it goes from one to one to one to N. Um, and the problem with that is that that's an exponential problem. So kind of the more people you get, uh, the, 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 the error rates explode exponentially. Um, mm. And so if you were to use an iPhone or something like a Vision Pro after a couple million of people, the whole system would break down. So it's a really hard problem to solve. And the only thing that actually can technically do that is the, uh, is, is the iris. Um, so you can look at fingerprints and, and face and all of those things. And none of them actually work at scale. Iris is the only thing that actually works. And so we went down this path with the constraint that we back then learned about zero knowledge proofs, which back then were still very early and very expensive. But we could draw kind of a system diagram of, okay, with zero knowledge proofs, we can actually build a system that can solve this proof of personal problem while leaving the users completely anonymous. Um, and so without sharing any information about them, we can just build a system that in a decentralized manner allows everyone to prove they're actually unique humans to different services. And so that was then the starting point for actually like building it out. And then, mm. and then um, yeah, and then we had a year of like understanding that building a prototype hardware device to building and manufacturing a hardware device are two very different things. And so then we had to learn as a team how to actually manufacture devices. And then one year later, we learned that running a global operations is yet again a very different thing. And so we hired many people from Uber and Airbnb and things like that. So kind of every year throughout the company, the company really fundamentally changed. And now we are 
around 200 people. Um, we have people all around the world. Um, and yeah, it's a fairly complex uh, company to, to run. And but it's, a, it's, it's, I think, the most exciting year by a, a, a large margin for the project. 